how do you how do you communicate an experience which is intensely personal and also in a way you're part of a, a, a large historical movement that other people were not part of. I cannot even imagine in my mind what, what might have been, I mean I'd never have survived, I would have cried my heart hadn't been shot <laughs> or killed or something. My name is lost clear out of my head, not a clear copper. Clinkhammer, nice name. A hammer, belting things clear out of my head. Such a little girl with her blonde curls. Say, I'll be good now, whatever I've done, I won't do it Say, again. Say, I'll be good just now, what whatever I've done, I've done, I won't I'll do it again. Now. Just tell me what I've done and I'll be good now. June? June? What's that? Am I one? Belting things, making noise. See, I grew up to my mother banging, banging like that on a, on a board, making fish. That's why I use a chopper. It's like a traditional thing that I need to have. Chopper. But my mother was a very nice Jewish cook, so. My father came in 1927 from Poland. It was uh, anti-Semitic and hard for them to live there as Jews in Poland. I was born in Carlton. Every house almost was Jewish. I could name them to this very day. All the way along Drummond Street, all the way along Rastown Street. Do you all know Carlton? Well, Amos Street, Canning Street. It was just a beautiful, beautiful place to be. My name is Marietta Elliot Clearcoper, and I was born on the 31st of December. 1937 in Amsterdam, Holland. Well, my mother tells me a nice story about the, my first word, and it went something like this: Afwegschut, which means anti-aircraft gunning. So from that I take it that I have had some awareness that something strange was going on. We had a big radio, big big standard radio. You don't, probably don't know what them, I'm talking about a console, not a little tiny thing. It's sort of, it's a piece of furniture and my parents were always on short wave to Europe and uh, I could hear the crying and the crying because they were attacking Poland and my mother had no news of her family there. There was air raid sirens and, and you could sense it, it almost like an animal does that something's going on, but you don't know what's going on. So, And of course one brother perished with his family and the sister survived, but her children and husband were they perished in the war. My mother lived long enough to hear that. Her sister survived the Holocaust and ended up in Israel. She didn't want to come to Australia. My mother wanted her to come and live here and she said no. She wanted to go to a Jewish country. She's gone through all that. Her children were given up by the Poles, not by the Germans. Polish housekeeper gave her children to the Germans when she went out to work in the, in the munition factory. But we saw her and that was that. So we had a, quite a strong thing to my mother's sister. We were sent to a little country village called Zaist with these uh, Christian families. My mother, she just said something like, oh well, this nice lady is going to take you to, to the park. See you later. And she just walked off. Because she didn't want, she couldn't tell us anything because if we told what was really going on, we'd, we'd be dead. She didn't dare show any emotion either. And I think for me, that she just left us there like we thought she was coming back later that day. But we didn't see her for three years. And I kept thinking, when is she coming back and why am I with these people? And sometimes when uh, Germans were coming through the town, uh, they put me in the cellar. And I didn't, never understood why they put me there 
I thought it must be because I had been naughty and I used to scream. I remember this very clearly. I used to scream my head off and say, I'll be good now, whatever I've done, I won't do it again. Just tell me what I've done and I'll be good now and uh, just don't leave me here. But nobody could hear me. And it's a funny thing, but um, when I look back now, then that saved my life, the fact that no one could hear me. As we all grow older, I think it comes back to haunt us. And that can cause problems as well as bringing you closer together. Just after the war, we actually celebrated the major festivals. I really enjoyed that, the, the rituals and the ceremonies. That's when my Jewish identity, I think, was formed. Because I didn't know what the word Jew actually meant. I had no idea. The way I look at it is, they're my tribe. And I think it is because I had to suffer for being Jewish. I think I still like my, my traditions. I'm superstitious, I suppose, that's why. <laughs> that's what it probably is, which is what our religion's based on, I think, superstition. Always kiss the mezuzah on the door when I leave. Do you know where the mezuzah is? Yeah. I don't know, just silly things that we do. Um, always carry something red. The boys only had red jackets. They didn't have any other colour, but that was to keep the evil eye away. Um, when I get on the plane, I say the Shema Israel, which is our prayer for, well, for, for help. <laughs> so being Jewish, I'm really quite proud of being Jewish. This is a good country for Jewish people. They've let us live here. They've let us survive here. And, and grow here and I suppose it's pretty good for them too. I have never felt quite at home in Australia. I'm more or less reconciled to that fact and I certainly have found that writing about my experiences has been a tremendous help to me. But not only that, I think I write with the fear, not just about the fear, my name is lost. Yesterday, I still had it. Mother gave me a new one. What's your new name, she said, and I had to repeat it until I could say it without mistakes, until she was satisfied. Klinkhammer, nice name. A hammer, belting things, making noise, not a clear coper, walking the streets with old schmutters. And then the officer asks me, what's your name? And I say proudly, my new name is, new, new? What was it before? Are you a Jew? Jew, Jew, what's that? Am I one? I burst into tears. Now my old name lost as well, clear out of my head. He hesitates, such a little girl with her blonde curls. What if he let her go?